Welcome to DUMC. Whether you are joining us in person or worshiping with us online, we welcome you here today. I am Liz Elliott. I am the chair of SPRC, and today we truly have a lay-led worship service for everyone gathered here today. We are so glad that you're here, and we pray that this time of worship will be meaningful and uplifting for us all. If you are visiting here for the first time, please stop by the welcome station um, in the annex. And I do have a few announcements to share with everyone today. The first announcement is on behalf of Carol Yoakum and the missions team. The Damascus team of 14 congregants has responded, and Carol Yoakum has been working with a resettlement agency out of Frederick to help resettle an Afghan family of mom, dad, and five children. They arrive August 1st, which is just around the corner. The Damascus team is getting oriented, getting background checks, and all of the other getting to know you things that happen at the beginning of any wonderful project. They are working to furnish a new rental home that the family will be moving into. And please stay posted for additional updates from Carol and the resettlement team. One of the things to expect coming soon is a list of specific household items in good conditions that includes being clean and having no contact with pets. Please reach out to Carol Yoakum if you have further questions or you would like to contribute. The next announcement I have is on behalf of the Damascus Reopening Task Force to share with everyone that yes, COVID is still here, and yes, we absolutely are learning to live with COVID. Just a reminder to everyone, please stay home if you are not feeling well. We encourage everyone to consider wearing a mask in indoor settings if that's something that they choose to do. And just general reminders for us all, wash your hands and just be aware of the environment that is around you. I have a few other announcements that other folks have to share. I'm gonna give the mic first to the lovely Jackie, who is gonna talk about Food Truck Wednesday. Good morning. So we're gonna try it again, Food Truck Wednesday, wonderful Wednesday here at DUMC. It's gonna be such a, an exciting, great week with VBS and a food truck and hopefully seeing our people and our community just sharing time and fellowship together Wednesday evening. It's from five o'clock to eight o'clock. Uh, for those who are on social media, you'll be seeing um, a little bit of a social media blast. For those of you who are not, we have some little flyers out in the foyer or see me and I'll be happy to give it to you. Uh, we have a Greek food truck um, a uh, brick oven pizza and uh, flip side gastro, which has burgers and chicken sandwiches, and then Pacha Mama's Juice Company. So, uh, with three food trucks, we're hoping that the lines won't be as long, but uh, it's supposed to be a lovely evening, a little bit warm. But as we saw last time, as the evening goes on, the shade just gets more and more on our lawn and it's um, just quite lovely. So I hear rumor that there may be some Frisbees and cornhole and other shenanigans. So um, bring your lawn chairs and there will be some picnic tables, Lisa said, set up. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so we just look forward to seeing all of you and just uh, sharing some wonderful time together. Good morning. So this afternoon at one o'clock, our church gets transformed to the Castle of the North. Uh, we will be bringing in the Knights of the North on Monday. 
I would like to thank all of you that have been involved in helping to get us to where we are today. Whether it was a box that you donated, and trust me, you all donated lots and lots of boxes. We've been painting and painting and painting and painting. I'm pretty sure the youth are sick and tired of painting boxes, but they were very gracious in the process. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on through there. For those of you that have donated things, your time and other stuff, we really couldn't do it without you, so thank you very much. Um, we have 25 youth signed up for VBS. I am very excited about that um, because we started with 11 and I was really panicking and I even got two new youth yesterday. So, um, and I'm turning no one away. Whoever wants to come, as long as they fill out the paperwork, uh, we're going we're gonna to take them. We have 10 youth helpers that are going to be there. Um, so it's all very exciting. In addition to VBS, we have been working on the youth chapel. It's going a little slower than I would like, summertime and getting everybody, and this little thing called VBS has distracted me a bit um, <laughs> in the last week or so. But we have, uh, we've been cleaning things out. We've been working on getting ready to paint the chapel because of the walls. We've had to bring somebody in to look at it to give us some advice on that, and um, we're moving that process forward. And um, we are, I'm actually meeting with a couple, uh, one of the youth tomorrow, or this week after VBS, where we'll be talking about starting fundraising. Um, because there are some things we're gonna need to do that are gonna cost some dollars and we need to be able to get the fundraising for it. We've already gotten a donation of the ping pong table that we wanted. It is up in the soon to be game room. That was a little task all on its own that was quite interesting if you had seen us trying to get that in there. I thought a folding ping pong table would be very light. No. <laughs> it's very big, it's very bulky, and it was hard to move, but anyway. So we are making progress, good things are happening. Uh, stay tuned for more. I will try to take some photos for those of you that won't be enjoying the uh, VBS this week so you can see what we did with all of your boxes. Thank you very much. Welcome to worship this day. We come seeking peace and hope. This is the house of the Lord. In it, you will find what you seek. Help us to open our hearts to God's word and will for us. Ask for God's help. It will be given to you.
everyone realizes the standard crew is not here today. <laughs> Welcome uh, to worship this day. We have come seeking peace and hope. Th this is the home of the Lord in it, and you will find what you, what you seek. Help us to open our hearts. Ask for God's help, it will be given to you. Praise be to God, who loves and cares for us. Um, we already did that, didn't we? <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. I'm not going to tell you my name. <laughs> the epistle lesson today is from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to a human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the four, in the four power of God, who raised him from the dead. And then you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all of our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be the, the, your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And the answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you anything because he is your, because he is your friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead, instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Surprise. So this was uh, Brad Turner Little's uh, Sunday to preach, but as of Friday afternoon, uh, I am the last person standing uh, right here. So uh, grace would be appreciated on this short notice here. So uh, the sermon title today is uh, Teach Us to Pray, and I'm gonna start off with a prayer that I've heard throughout all my life uh, growing up, and that's may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So anytime Brad is preaching on a Sunday, uh, I know that he will uh, subconsciously pick uh, one of my favorite hymns. And this Sunday was actually no ex exception to that. Uh, Crown Him with Many Crowns, our opening hymn this morning, is actually one of my favorites. Uh, and it happens to be an extremely popular hymn across all denominations. You can find it in almost every denomination's main hymnal. There's an interesting part to this though. If you took all the hymnals it appears in and lined them up side by side, you would find that there's hardly any commonality between what was included in each hymnal. Verses are in different orders, parts of verses are removed, verses are swapped in and out. So our uh, verse, that last verse that we sang uh, this morning, crown him the Lord of love, happens to be the second verse in some hymnals, the third verse in others, and so on and so on. And so the text was originally written by Robert Bridges in the 1850s, and he had recently converted to Catholicism. He wrote six verses for the Catholics, and they were included in various anthologies at the time. Around 25 years later, the Anglicans discovered it. But a lyricist named Godfrey Thrying, Godfrey Thrying, that's a good name, didn't agree with some of the theology present in Bridges' original text. So he wrote his own six verses, intending to completely supplant the original with those. And after decades of editors looking at both sets of verses and picking and choosing and rearranging, we have basically a hodgepodge of both Bridges and Thrang's verses appearing throughout the hymnals. In some verses, you even have a mix of Bridges and Thrang's text together. It almost functions as a great Rorschach test, a theological choose your own adventure of how you see Jesus. Even the opening verse, Jesus as the lamb upon his throne is not without controversy. At King's Chapel in downtown Boston, a parishioner that had donated a vast sum of money to renovate the stained glass window in the front the image of Jesus highly exalted on the throne was replaced by a softer Jesus and the lamb glass image. Upon seeing this, another parishioner at the church offered to pay whatever it took to change the window back. 
In another verse, crown him the Lord of love. Behold his hands inside. I distinctly hear the voice of Charles Wesley. In his own hymn, Depth of Mercy, he writes, Therefore me, my Savior stands, holding forth his wounded hands. God is love, and with a big exclamation point at the end. And what I love about Charles Wesley's writing so much is he writes as he's, he's experiencing this for the very first time, like that just clicked in his head as he wrote it. God is love. I know, I feel, Jesus weeps and loves me still. Now sadly, our hymnal doesn't use what I think is the best verse out of all of them. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. Ineffably sublime, meaning so lofty and exalted, we don't have the words to properly describe it. So I was listening uh, yesterday on my way back from Ocean City to a YouTube play mix of all the different variations from all these different churches uh, of this hymn, and I went through a little exercise with myself. If I was the editor of a hymnal, which verses would I include? I found that answer was intimately connected to my own personal theology and faith journey. Now we all have our own personal thoughts of who Jesus is and how we connect with him through prayer and scripture. It's a vision formed, like Jesus alludes to in the gospel, by a lot of asking, searching, and knocking. My first years in church were spent at Bradley Hills Presbyterian in Bethesda, so I got the Presbyterian version of Crown Him With Many Crowns. To clarify, that's the Presbyterian Church's USA's version, which is different than the one appearing in the Presbyterian Church PCA hymnal. It was and still is a church known for its music program, and I gravitated towards that. But I admit I was drawn mainly to the music for music's sake. The prayers, the sermons, the various other elements of liturgy, to completely be frank, bored me. I was happy to listen to the prelude, zone out for a little bit, and then come back in for the postlude. I was searching and seeking for something that just wasn't there where I was at. I asked for eggs, and I got the scorpions. This continued on until I went to college in Boston as an organ performance major, and at the recommendation of a friend, I went to a service at Trinity Episcopal Church right in the center of Copley Square. It was a church that, again, had a reputation for great music, and I went on only expecting again to enjoy some great preludes and postludes. That first service, though, everything changed for me. The music was great, of course, but for the first time, I had a sense of God reaching out and connecting to me. I was searching, and I had found. And I had knocked, and the door opened. The way the music intertwined with prayer, psalm, and liturgy spoke to me like nothing else ever had. To really put it into perspective, as an 18-year-old college student in a fun city like Boston, I suddenly wanted to go to church. I remember after the Thanksgiving break, taking the T from Logan Airport directly to the Copley Square stop with all my luggage in tow so I wouldn't miss the opening procession and prayers. And let me tell you, on a Sunday morning, when you're a college student, getting up at 10 o'clock to walk a mile to a church is a, quite a feat. Through this came another realization eventually, that what connects me with me doesn't connect to everyone. I was so euphoric at what I had discovered I thought if only other people were exposed to it, they would feel the same way. Later on in the year, I was in what young people would describe today as a situationship with a classmate, and we decided one day to take a week and go to each other's church services. Hers was up first, an evening service at Park Street Presbyterian, and it was a service very much geared to a college crowd and had all the stereotypical elements of what you would find in a hip contemporary service. The band, the lights, the informal clothes, no bulletins, the young affable worship leader that's somehow always named Chad. What really killed me was that they had a huge, majestic pipe organ in their sanctuary, and it was just sitting there, not being used, like they didn't know what they were missing. I could see, though, that she had connected through the service very much like I had connected through Trinity. She had found the verse that spoke to her. It came time for her to come to my service and for her to experience the choirs and the organ and the chanting and the standing and the sitting and the kneeling and the standing again. And the experiences were exactly flipped. I was riveted through every second of it, 
Well, she very politely suffered through it. She was asking for eggs there. It was scorpions all the way down. That experience, though, demonstrates that there was a wonderful diversity of prayer and worship out there. And if you were searching and knocking, somewhere out there is a door ready to be opened. And just like the mix and match verses of, mix and match verses of crown him with many crowns, there are all different flavors and permutations leading back to the same Jesus. As a TikTok trend would say, same faith, different font. A great measure of seeing how people were taught to pray is the Lord's Prayer, of course. But recited, think of at a large wedding, and no printed bulletin. It will all start out perfectly in unison until it gets to, and forgive us our. Some people over here saying trespasses, some over there saying sins, and even more in the back saying debts. Again, same faith, different font. So this Sunday to wrap it up, I invite you to reflect back today and think on moments where the door opened for you. Who taught you how to pray? What verses would be in your own personal hymnal? What crowns have you bestowed onto Jesus? Thanks be to God, amen. the VBS leaders that are here to please come up and join me. This may be you and I, Pam. <laughs> oh, no. Good. <laughs> so there is an insert in your bulletin that says VBS dedication, if you would turn to that. Our Knights of North Castle, VBS begins this week. An amazing group of leaders has volunteered to provide leadership. We want to recognize these volunteers. I've already asked you forward, so we're there. <laughs> From the book of Ephesians, we hear these words. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Oh, yes, Jane, you're supposed to be up here, too. <laughs> So that is our verse that we will be focusing on during the service this year, the VBS. 
These leaders are dedicating themselves to leading knights to armor up and guide them to deeper relationship with God through Jesus as they explore where God's power can take them. We ask you to help us extend an invitation to neighbors, relatives, and friends to join us as Knights of North Castle VBS. Armor up with truth. Armor up with justice. Armor up with faith. Armor up with salvation. Gracious God, thank you for these people who have, called to, who have called to your service. Give each leader a kind and compassionate heart for each child and youth. Fill their hearts with love. Help them be a blessing to all who take part in our Knights of North Castle VBS program. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in praying for people of our congregation and those in our community and around the world who need your healing touch, Lord, in this time. We pray for Doug, for Lisa, for Kevin, Tony, Kenny Sue, Pat, Mary Emma, Mary, Jean, David, Tina, and Sharon and so many others in our church community and around the world who are impacted particularly by the ongoing impact of COVID. Please join me as together we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. At this time, I invite you to please sign the attendance pad in the Ritual of Friendship. The pads are located on the inside of the pew. Pass it along to your neighbor, and if you're not sure who's in the pew with you today, please take a moment and introduce yourself after the service today.
Friends, as you go forth, know that you leave with the unfailing love of God. As you leave this place, know that by God's strength, you will be able to face the challenges of the coming week. As you return to your daily lives, know that your pursuit of peace reveals to the world that you are God's children. Amen. Thanks be to God.